friends, welcome back to my channel. I have been so focused on playing with and making decisions about my eyeshadow palettes. And today I have four eyeshadow palettes that I have been super cut through and very scrutinous of. And I wanna let you know that only one of these survived the chopping block. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my thoughts with you guys about which one of these palettes lives and why the other ones are being kicked out. We'll go ahead and start with the most bulky one, which is this Elf Ariel Disney Treasure Within Beauty book. As I mentioned in my eyeshadow palettes that I still have to reckon with video, there used to be a time, I would say like maybe five or six years ago, where every fall and spring, I feel like it was every fall, maybe spring or slash summer, that e.l.f. would come out with these Walgreens exclusive like Disney collaborations. And one summer, I really had my heart set on getting this Ariel book. What it came with is that you had like this nice little mirror, you open the card, you had instructions about two different looks, and then over here you have a plastic panel. You had a um, lip product that I have no idea where that went. I have two brushes, one to apply the face products and the others to apply the eyeshadows. When I looked at this, I loved the idea of it because it had some pops of color, but it also was grounded in a lot of like easy neutrals that I thought I would be able to use. And I also liked the idea of expanding my bronzer horizons. However, here's what I'll say. The pigmentation payoff and quality of these shadows is really not super stellar. The jewel tones in here don't really look like this on your eyes, even when you try to pack them on. There just isn't enough pigment. And then if you take those out of the equation, you're just left with four generic colors that I have a ton of already that are in higher, better pigment quality. And so I just don't feel like these eyeshadows are needed in my collection and they're not worth working with. So after I ruled that out, I was like, well, you still have these bronzers. Why don't you maybe see if you might want to pop one of these out? No bueno. Both of these have glitter infused in them. I didn't notice that when I was looking at it. Like it just looks like a nice satiny, slightly deeper, slightly lighter bronzer. But when you actually get your brush in there and apply it, it's like this shimmery, glittery type of bronzer. That's not my jam. So this palette does not check off the boxes for me. And even though it's super cute and I'm super into Ariel for obvious reasons, this palette does not get to stay and play in my collection. The next palette that I have is my Too Faced Natural Eyes palette. This is a palette where I had already ruled out one of the shades and the rest of the shades in here I was still sort of mixed on. To be honest, um, I don't know why I didn't pop out Sexpresso or Erotica because these are both browns infused with glitter and that's why I had gotten rid of Chocolate Martini. If I can recall, there was like a hot moment where I was trying to pop out shades and palettes that I didn't like. I think it was when I was trying to decide my 2018 Pan That palette and this was one of the contenders. And I feel like this popping out didn't go well so I just sort of didn't bother with these two. So I really was left with these six shadows. Now my problem with Silk Teddy is that it looks really nice and like pinky in the pan but really it comes off as like a silver color and I'm not into silver lids. Like it's just not my jam. I was hoping for it to be much more of that like pinky color because I probably would have gotten a lot of use out of that. And then when it comes to uh, Heaven, sure, basic cream color. Could I use it? Absolutely. Might I pop it out? Maybe if I can get it out, but I feel like it's really hard to break this palette apart. And then when it came to these colors, I don't know, I just feel like they're okay. And then the reality is I have them in other palettes and I just don't wanna pull this out for one shadow. I wanna be able to use this collectively. And when I ruled out like Silk Teddy, it took a lot of this palette's usage as a holistic palette away. And I just thought to myself like, I'm not, I'm not gonna use this. I'm not gonna get enough use out of it. In fact, if you look really close at Heaven, 
I'm not sure it'll pick up, but there are actually little like bumps on Heaven, which I'm pretty sure is a hard pan. I'm gonna look into it before I decide to pop this out or not. But at the end of the day, this palette just doesn't meet the makeup needs that I want it to. And so it no longer has a home in my eyeshadow palette collection. The third palette that I wanna talk to you about is the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Armed and Gorgeous. This is one of the four eyeshadow palettes that she came out with in her vault collection. This is what it looks like. This, interestingly enough, was one of the palettes that I was most drawn to when she first showed the vault collection. But if I'm being honest, I feel like it was because of this color top secret. I really love the look of a green and like a soft gold on my eyes, especially in the fall. I think it works really well with my skin tone and my hair and I just like it. But if I take that out, what am I left with? A sea of like yellows and I don't use yellow eyeshadow. It's not a thing I do. And when I would go to pull this palette out, I just found myself being like, I don't like these colors. I don't want to play with these colors. And the ones that like here you have classified, which is basically like a pressed glitter, it just doesn't pack onto my lid in a very flattering way. I have slightly hooded eyes, so that could be part of the problem, but it just wasn't working with me. And Top Secret is so dark. It's like a dark army green color. It's not like an olivey color or a tone that I really do prefer. It's a bit too harsh for me. So this palette has got to go. I feel bad with this one because there's not a ton of usage. Like unlike my Too Faced Natural Eyes, this one is one not that old and two not that used. And so I feel bad like saying goodbye to it, but I just don't need it to sit here and rot. I would rather it go to a like newer, better home. So this one's out for me. The last palette that I have for you and the only palette that has survived the wreckage is the CoverGirl True Naked Nudes. So arguably like one of the cheaper things gets to survive. I once again brought this home with me for a weekend. I had a wedding to go to over Labor Day weekend and so I brought this along. This is really nice. It's really enjoyable. I really like the three shimmer shades in here, but the mattes in here aren't that terrible either. Like this is just a nice, easy, staple palette. This is basically what I wanted the Too Faced Natural Eyes palette to be, but isn't. So I'm really happy with this. I think this is a nice standalone palette that if I'm not looking to bring my Lorac Mega Pro palette somewhere with me, or I just want something super easy and neutral, this is phenomenal. This is glorious. I'm really glad that I have it and I'm really glad that the colors in here, like the formulation is really nice. The cream, the matte cream, two matte browns in here are nice. I didn't really play with the black. No one is surprised by that, but I'm not upset that it's in here because all the other colors are really enjoyable and it just, again, pumps out an easy go-to look. I could definitely see myself like on a morning where I'm super tired and lazy and not feeling that creative, pulling this out and being able to wear it to school. So this one caught me by surprise. Really, really happy with it. All right, guys. I really feel like the back half of this year has been incredibly cutthroat with eyeshadow palettes and I think it's a good thing. I think that when I sat down some weeks ago and looked at what I had left, the reality was a lot of what I hadn't played with yet is stuff that I don't really like or stuff that doesn't really belong in my makeup collection, which is why I hadn't tested it out. But now that I am totally tunnel vision focused. I am moving and grooving and really curating a collection of eyeshadow that I am super happy with. So I hope that you enjoyed hearing my reasoning and seeing what palettes are being shipped out of here. And I'll talk to you in my next video real soon. Bye.